that it's something that I've found in a lot of women um, will find the cancers with, with uh, self-breast examinations. Mine ended up being um, ductal carcinoma in situ. And I just had said, well, we didn't see that on x-rays. It's very uncommon to actually have a mass um, that's left a person in inside two. And what happened with me is that I had so much of the inside two going on and so much of those calcium deposits that I could actually feel. Um, and usually, they're kind of scattered throughout, and so you just see it happening on an x-ray or a mammogram, but you actually don't feel a mass. I had a very aggressive tumor type when they looked at it under the microscope, we're going to come back to your triple negative in just a second. But luckily, by the grace of God, none of those have actually broke down at the milk dust yet. So I had DCS, DCIS that I found on exam as opposed to finding on our routine mammogram. And I was 45 at the time. So I wasn't due for a routine mammogram for another five years. So um, between the time that I was coming back in school and all, but I was going back to get a second master's degree, and it was in the middle of my And I was like, oh, this feels kind of out here. This feels kind of benign. I'll go in for my test, you know, next week or the next couple of weeks when I finish my exam. And my husband was like, can you go tomorrow? Can you call tomorrow? Can you use your advantage that you're already in the office? Can you just call your friends and get this worked out tomorrow? And I was like, oh, I'm test. I have so many days. Um, oh, but OK, OK. And then it turns out that I have cancer. So uh, within two weeks of me finding my own uh, mass, actually had a And so that's one of the other things that's important to know is that for some women, treatment can just be surgical. And so again, finding it super early means that I didn't have to have chemotherapy. I didn't have to have radiation therapy. But it is important to know that radiation therapy with a lumpectomy, and lumpectomy means they, they just take out the tumor but leave the rest of the breast there, has the same outcomes as a mastectomy. So you don't have to have the whole breast removed. For me, um, I had three areas of abnormalities, two of which they couldn't buy because they were too close to the chest wall. And so I knew that one of them had some cancer stuff going on, and we couldn't say for sure. And I wasn't really comfortable having just that breast cancer taken out and leaving the other two to get big enough for it to buy out some of the other It was like to take the whole thing. Um, but for some women, if you only have one area of abnormality and it hasn't spread, and you don't have to have chemotherapy. You can have the same outcomes with just taking out the tumor and having radiation as you can with mastectomy. So that's you know, um, so that's something to make sure that we know about the sort of quality between those two. And then I was done. I'm done. So I, I had to come back in four months for reconstruction. So one of the things that's on Dawn's list of like advances that she was talking to her conscious about were some of the um, advances in reconstruction. So mastectomies aren't as radical. They used to be, um, and the reconstruction options are actually a lot better. So at the time that they went in and took out the breast, they actually had replaced it with basically like a, an empty water balloon, essentially. Um, and I would go in each week, and they would put uh, saline. They would just like harpoon my chest and uh, pump in some saline. And it, what it did was it grew the tissue, it grew the skin on the breast, like in belly would grow when you're pregnant. So if you're pregnant lady back here, who's amazing, and the laborers can speak. Um, Right? Our bellies get big and there's a baby inside. And so that's what it did. It basically stretched the skin out enough so on the back four months later, I could just switch it out for a breast implant. And then I was really done. And that was eight years ago. And so I continue to be cancer free and I have five little twins and one of the In part because I listened to my husband, who's not a doctor, he's a teacher, um, and went right the next day because it, it, it caught them very early, but they were very aggressive tumor types. And so it could have been that had I waited until I got around to finish my exams and doing some other stuff, seeing some patients, wrapping stuff, I'm always busy, that maybe I would have not had as good a doctor. So, and I'm, and I'm a doctor, and I know better. So if I'm a doctor, and I know better, and I have started a nonprofit for women's health education, then I know how challenging it can be. If for women, we are always busy. We always have someone else to take care of, be it our sisters, our community, our children, our parents, our husbands, and we, we almost always prioritize other things. But we can't do those other things if we're not here, or if we're not sick, um, or if we are sick. And so it's part of my message is the same message of hope and inspiration, and all the other things that we've been hearing about saying we're going here, um, just about getting uh, the time and love for ourselves as we do for others.